Geometry! The reason why you see all the answers here is because I just did all these notes and I forgot to press record. So bear with me and I'll try to cover things up. I don't want you to just feverishly copy everything and not learn it, but uh, here we go. I'll, we'll start with that warm-up. Uh, today is 3.6, prove the theorems of perpendicular lines. Uh, yeah, it sounds scary because the word prove is in our title, but uh, I'll, I'll guide you through there. There are going to be a lot of theorems today that relate to one another, and they will kind of blend in a little bit, but uh, you'll, you'll be fine. I don't expect you to memorize exactly which one does what, but you do need to know uh, some of the properties here. So here we go. Find the distance. If you recall, distance is the change of x's, square it, plus the change of y's, square it, and then take the square root of that. So this is a form of your Pythagorean theorem, if you recall. So your x's, 5 minus 2, square it, plus the y's, 7 minus 3, square it. 5 minus 2 is 3, square it. Four minus, sorry, 7 minus 3 is 4, square it. We're going to get 5. All right, the next one. Measure of M and B, that angle, is 90. What can you tell me with this angle? Well, the measure of A and B and M and B is 180. That's the definition of a linear pair. Well, if this one's 90, that one has to be 90. So far, so good? All right. Okay, little activity. You ready? Okay, I've got a little post-it note here. It says, fold a piece of paper. You know, I'll just, just do this. Okay, so I'm going to fold a piece of paper anyway. It doesn't matter which way you fold it. You see, I just folded a piece of paper. So I just took a post-it note and folded it. And I'm going to draw a line along that fold just so you can see it. All right, so step two says, fold the paper again so that the original fold lines up on itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it so this line is going to be on top of itself. I don't know if you could see that. Can you see that through? I kind of have it like that. So I'm going to crease that. And then I'm going to fill in this line so you can see that also. What types of paper, uh, angles appear to be formed? Oh, what do you think? They look like right angles. Go ahead and use your protractor, measure it out, doo -doo -doo -doo. and yes, they're all right angles. Measures of the angles of the protractor, are they all congruent? They're all 90 degrees. All right, kind of fun. Moving on. Here we go. Let's cover this part up. Okay, so theorem 3.8. I'm actually going to prove this one here, and unfortunately this proof is going to be like the same as example one, but eh, doing something twice makes it a little easier. If two lines intersect to form a linear pair of congruent angles, then the lines are perpendicular. So we're going to start with congruent angles, then they're perpendicular. So that's what theorem point 0.8 says. So if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, so I marked each angle with an arc, then they're perpendicular. Why? Okay. So if angle 1 plus angle 2, they make a straight line, equal 180. It's the definition of a linear pair. Look at this. Angle 1 plus angle 1 equals 180. How did I go from here to here? Well, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So I substituted that in. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so angle 1 plus angle 1, I have two of those. So two angle 1s is equal to 180. I just basically addition, uh, add prop addition property of equality. Divide both sides by 2. Angle 1 is equal to 90. A division. Okay. And. If angle 1 is equal to 90, then angle 2 is equal to 90 because I substituted. Remember our given? Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Hey, if angle 2 is also 90 degrees, they're perpendicular because definition of perpendicular lines say two right angles are formed. All right, easy stuff. I know I'm going through this really fast because uh, I just did the video and I want to walk the dog. Find some painted rocks. So here we go. If two lines are perpendicular, so now we're starting with this. Okay, so if C is perpendicular to E, then all four angles are right angles. So we're starting with perpendicular lines, and then we go to four right angles. Okay? Example 1. Like I told you that last theorem, 3.8, is just like example 1. If angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent, what can you conclude about measure of angle 2? Well, let's kind of cover that up again. Measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 is 180. Well, I know that these are congruent, so I'm going to substitute in. 
Substitute measure of angle 1 for measure of angle 2. They're congruent. They have equal measures. That's equal to 180. When I'm adding those, I have two measure of angle 1's. Divide both sides by 2. Resubstitute. Both angles equal 90 degrees. So 90, uh, measure of angle 2 is also 90. This wasn't really a proof, but they wanted to know what can you tell me about that. All right, theorem 3.10. If two sides of adjacent acute angles are perpendicular, then the angles are complementary. So we're starting off with a perpendicular line here and a perpendicular line here. So you probably want to label these if they're not labeled. Then angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary. So think about it. Complementary angles up to 90. So angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 90. We know that. Now let's use it. Okay. So prove if angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary. Now we're doing the backwards that the lines are perpendicular. Okay, so angle 1 and angle 2, that's, that's our given. And this is what we're trying to prove. So if you don't know what you're doing with any proof, at least write down given. You get a point for that. Okay, so measure of angle 1 plus the measure of tang angle 2 equal 90. How do we know that? They tell us these are complementary angles. Complementary angles add to equal 90. So that's your definition of a complementary angle. All right, now look at this. Measure of ABC is equal to measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2. That's your, remember, angle addition postulate? Take one angle plus another and equals the whole angle. Now take a look at this. This is the tricky part. Measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equal 90. Measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals ABC. So that means you can set those equal to each other. That's your transitive. I know some people would argue substitution. They're similar, and I probably would accept it, but yeah, transitive. Okay, now if the measure of angle ABC equal 90 degrees, then measure of ABC is a right angle, because that's what a right angle does, the definition of a right angle, it's 90 degrees. And if you have a right angle, then the lines are perpendicular, because definition of perpendicular lines. So I know this is kind of tricky, and it's like a redundant sometimes, um, but they do want those, those steps. And most of the homework would be a lot shorter than these. Okay, so we have a couple theorems in a row. Um, should be easy stuff. So here we go. Perpendicular transversal theorem. Okay, so if you have perpendicular lines and a transversal, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. If a transversal, okay, this is our transversal T, is perpendicular, right here, to one of the parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other. Why? If you have parallel lines and these two angles are congruent, they're corresponding angles, then you have parallel lines. Okay, so basically we're using corresponding angles are congruent. So again, if K is parallel to L and K is perpendicular to T, then L is perpendicular to T. Okay, the next one. Hi, please. Theorem 3.12. Lines, uh, lines and perpendicular lines to transversal theorem. I think I have an error with that. In any case, in a plane, if two lines are perpendicular, okay, so I have this a perpendicular here and this perpendicular here, then they're parallel to each other. So if A is perpendicular to C and B is perpendicular to C, that means these have to be parallel. And again, why? If they're perpendicular, you have two right angles. These two angles are corresponding. So again, corresponding angles are congruent theorem comes into play. Last page, and then we're almost done. Okay, so let's uh, put this into action here. Determine which lines, if any, must be perpendicular. Okay, first of all, if you look, these two angles are the same. These two angles are corresponding. So if those corresponding angles are the same, that means A has to be parallel to B. Why? Because we have corresponding angles that can grow at 75. So if A is parallel to B, these two are also corresponding angles. If one of them is a right angle, then the other one's a right angle. So A also must be perpendicular to C because of the perpendicular transversal theorem. All right, so in the other video, I kind of messed this up. I don't know if I was reading this carefully or what. The distance from point A to a line is the length of the perpendicular segment from the point to that line. So if I have a line and a point A, the shortest distance is your perpendicular distance. That's basically what they're saying, okay? This perpendicular segment is the shortest distance between point A and a line. We'll just call this line L. For example, the distance between point A and line L is AB. Okay, so A should be up here, B should be here. Okay, 
Um, now if I look at this picture, the distance between the two parallel lines is the length of any perpendicular segment, segment joining the two lines. For example, the distance between this line and this line is perpendicular, which would be FG or BD. So this is the shortest distance. All right, so how can we use this information? Example four. This appears to be a trapezoid. In order for this to be a trapezoid, you need to say, um, have one set of parallel lines. So what I want to do is find the slope of this line. To go from this point to this one, I have to go up three. One, two, three, over four. So the slope is three-fourths. And how about from here to here? Up three, over four. So the slope is three-fourths. So if your slope is three-fourths, perpendicular slope will be negative four-thirds. So let's double check to go from this point to this one if we can go down four over three. So down one, two, three, four, over one, two, three. Hits that point. And let's double check here and here. Down one, two, three, four, over one, two, three. So your choice is we can find the distance between zero, three, and three, negative one, or find the distance between four, six, and seven, two. I already did the work for these two. I found that distance. I'm gonna go ahead and find the distance for this one. Okay, so distance equals change of x's, seven minus four, quantity squared, plus the change of y's, two minus six, quantity squared. So the seven minus four is three, we wanna square that. Two minus six is negative four, we wanna square that. So you have nine plus 16, which is the square root of 25, which is equal to five. They have the same distance. That would be the shortest distance between those two parallel lines. All right, everybody, um, I did break this assignment up into two different days. Uh, we may or may not get them both done, but let's work on it. And also, there is another standard um, that I was working with here. I wrote it in pencil on my scrap sheet, but it'll be typed in on yours. Everybody have a nice evening, and chapter three is done.